Hey everybody, and welcome to the final masterclass of 2020, which is going to be focusing on festive Christmas drinks. So my name is Dan Fellows. I'm the two-time World Coffee and Good Spirits champion. And today I'm joined by the legend of Christmas drinks, Lee Hyde. So Lee, do you want to tell me about yourself and your role at Monin? Yes, mate. Well, apparently I'm the legend of Christmas drinks. That's uh, <laughs> uh, quite the title. <laughs> uh, no, officially though, I am the beverage innovation manager for Monin and I look after the UK and Ireland. And uh, I must say, Dan, Merry Christmas. It's great to be on screen with you again. And yeah, I'm loving your Santa hat. Thank you, sir. Yours and your is, Christmas uh, tree. Very festive. It looks, uh, well, tell me about your hat, Lee. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit tight, yeah. So basically leaving the house this morning, I grabbed Santa hat and um, only just realized it's my daughter's, who's four. Amazing. So it's, uh, it's a little bit tight, but I thought I'd roll with it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pretty good summary of 2020, isn't it? It starts off quite well yeah. and then just gets a little bit weird. <laughs> But we're going to end it with a bit of a bang. So today we're going to be making some really delicious Christmassy kind of festive drinks. Lots of spice, lots of nice, sweet, kind of luxurious drinks. So I'm going to be making a spiced Irish coffee later on. But we're going to start with Lee's amazing drink. And Lee, do you want to talk about what you're going to be serving? Absolutely. Well, uh, first of all, I suppose it's worth just, uh, you know, touching on on Christmas drinks in general. Uh, I know that we all look forward to this time of year and especially getting out to the high street when you're doing your shopping and, you know, popping into your favorite coffee shop to have uh, have that festive festive drink, whether it's, you know, your gingerbread latte or uh, Black Forest hot chocolate, whatever it is. And I thought it'd be useful to use this this session to show, show the guys at home how they can quite easily make some of those drinks. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna look at the, the Black Forest hot chocolate. So absolute yeah. staple on, on a lot of coffee shop menus for the last uh, more than 10 years, I guess. And um, of course, you know, you're pairing the, the classic flavor combos of, of cherry and chocolate. So um, yeah, let's let's dive right in, yeah? Yeah, go for it. All right, so of course, um, really easy to make at home, but you know, even if you, you, you do work in a, a coffee shop, bar, restaurant, um, you know, it's, it's well worth putting on the menu there as a, as a festive uh, promotional drink as well. And, you know, you can check our website for uh, lots of different recipes. And of course, you can go on our website to buy the, the flavors that you need. So we'll start off, uh, we're just gonna make uh, a standard hot chocolate. So I've got chocolate powder and milk here, and I'm just gonna steam it on the steam wand. Um, but of course, if you're at home, you, you make, make it however it says on the box with the hot chocolate. So whether that's, you know, boiling some milk in a pan or, you know, adding some boiling water uh, and, and a little bit of cold milk, however you make it, um, just do that, and then all you need to do to turn it into festive is add your flavor from morning, and uh, of course, go a little bit OTT with the, the garnish and the toppings as well. <laughs> all right, so let's make this up. Might be a little bit noisy, Dan, while I use the steam wand. Don't worry, I'm used to it. There we go. No, Lee, you're absolutely right. So normally I hear steam ones with my own ears, but when I've got a direct line directly to my brain, it does get quite busy. <laughs> I've got an earphone <laughs> in, so it's like directly in my ear. Sounds good. So though. one of the little tips I'd say with the with the hot chocolate in general, and I'm, I'm sure you'll agree, you know, many years working in, in, in some brilliant coffee shops. Um, whenever you're making a, you know, a, a latte, a flat white, uh, any of those brilliant coffee drinks, you want that milk to be at the temperature that's just perfect for um, sipping straight away, right? Yeah. But with the hot chocolate, I think it does help to just steam it that little bit longer and really get that uh, that extra bit of temperature. You know, we really want it to be a hot chocolate rather than a warm chocolate. I agree completely, especially because you're gonna you're likely to be drinking it in winter, and uh, probably well, especially these days, it's probably gonna be a takeaway. So you definitely want that to be yeah, a nice absolutely. hand warming drink. You know, exactly. Yeah, just or you know, you can be sat by the fire with your hands around the cup. Hugging a mug. All right, so we're literally just going to pour the hot chocolate into our wonderful festive themed elf cup over here. Very good. And then what we're going to do, as I said, is, is literally just a case of, of making your hot chocolate and then adding the syrup. Uh, now you can see over here, I've got a few different syrups and I wanted to talk quickly while we're on the subject of um, the, the differences and which, which product you should actually use. So. With the, with the Black Forest, as I said, it's, it's using cherry. But we have two different types of cherry products here at Monin. We have our, our regular cherry syrup and we have our Morello cherry syrup. 
Now, it's always key to use the Morello cherry. The cherry one is a little bit um, more acidic. It's mostly used for, for cocktails. Um, and because of that high acidity, it will actually curdle your hot milk. So I know that we've had a few people um, uh, making that mistake before. So uh, definitely use the Morello cherry and it, it really makes the wonderful, wonderful Black Forest taste. And even though we're not gonna make the orange hot chocolate, it is another one of those classic Christmas flavors. And again, we've got the same problem here where we've got a few different types of orange. And the one that you wanna be using is the clear one, which is the, uh, the orange triple sec syrup. So that one is perfectly designed to go into hot, hot milk. Whereas the orange one, again, used more in cocktails and soft drinks, that's got two um, high levels of acidity to work in the hot milk. So just bear that in mind when you're ordering your, your syrup, make sure you get the right one. Top 10. All right. So we're going to add 15 mils of Morello cherry. Uh, of course, this is the taste. If you guys have got a, uh, a particularly sweet hot chocolate, and you can always use a little bit less. It's quite a quite a strong flavor. You can get away with using a little bit less. Uh, but on the flip side, if you know if you you really want to have a punchy flavor or you've got a bit of a sweet tooth, there's no harm in putting a little bit extra after 20 mils. I'd say. I think everyone right. deserves a little bit of uh, extra sweetness and a big bit of flavor this year, don't they? Absolutely. You shouldn't feel guilty about putting 20 <laughs> exactly. mils in at all this year. So we're just going <laughs> to give that a little stir. And do you know what? That's perfectly fine to drink as it is. That will be absolutely delicious. But if you really want to try and get that, uh, you know, coffee shop festive uh, drink feel, then you've got to go a little bit overboard. So we're going to add some whipped cream and we're going to put a nice bit of whipped cream on here. Okay, nice good helping there. Just a tiny amount. We're not worrying about calories this year, uh, Dan. <laughs> no, I agree. All right. And then lots of different ways you can, uh, you can jazz it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little dusting of uh, chocolate powder on there. So this can be the same one that you use to make the actual hot chocolate drink. Beautiful. And then, of course, you, you can use a cherry. You know, that's obviously going to make sense. But I've got this lovely little edible red glittery star. And just to, you know, spice it up a little bit, a little bit of uh, edible glitter sprayed on top yes. there. I don't know if you can yes. see that cloud of glitter that's uh, just going around <laughs> the hot chocolate. Yeah, you'll, that'll be uh, showing up for days in your uh, in your clothes. But um, <laughs> it really does add that extra touch, you know? Look at that. You'd so be perfect happy if as you well got served that, right? What was that, mate? You'd be very happy if you got served that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So if you've got some friends coming around, you know, why not um, Why not do something a little bit different and make them some, some beautiful hot chocolates? And if they're friends yeah. like mine, you might want to add a little bit of spice rum or whiskey in there as well. It'll, yeah. uh, it'll certainly work turning it into a boozy hot chocolate. Very nice. So that's it for me. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm slightly scared again. about drinking this on screen because I'm just going to get a face full of whipped cream <laughs> and chocolate powder. Uh, I was about so to I think say I might just set that aside polite. for later. <laughs> no, I think you should have a big old gulp plate. It'd be rude not to. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay, I will. I'll We're all that. friends here. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave oh. it on the side for later. Fine. Fine. Well, <laughs> not going to give it. you the pleasure of seeing my whipped cream face then. Well, I'm going to be um, making a drink with cream on top later, so I'll be getting the full milk moustache for both of us. Brilliant. So that one's that from me. Um, as, I, as I said, check our, uh, check our websites, check our social media handles. You'll see loads of fun, festive inspiration for, for lots of other drinks. Awesome. That is a and classic that, one right there. That template could be used for different flavors, different syrups, maybe some alcohol in there. 100%, well. yeah. So um, why not tell you some of our other popular ones? So um, gingerbread, whilst that would normally be more of your coffee-focused um, uh, flavor, we're seeing it more and more turning up in hot chocolates, and it does work really, really well. Um, we already talked about orange hot chocolate. Yeah, that's a kind of classic Terry's, hot, uh, Terry's chocolate there. Mint is another great one. We talked about Black Forest, but then honestly, any it, it, can, it can be anything. You know, if you want to use honeycomb, is beautiful. Hazelnut, Most very nice. Hazelnut, mm. praline. You know, yeah. there's so many good ones. So uh, I love it. Yeah, whatever takes you fancy. And I know that you popcorn's one of your favorites as well. It right? is. Yeah, I love popcorn syrup. Is just a revelation to me because to make popcorn syrup is nigh on impossible, and the popcorn syrup that Monin do is just popcorn in a bottle. It's so good. So I've used that. And probably worth cocktails. saying here, because um, people might be confused at home as well, is all our flavors are 100% natural. Yeah. So we don't exactly. use any artificial flavoring to make that popcorn. Yeah. And it's really hard to extract flavor from popcorn in my experience. So actually 
the popcorn syrup is absolutely perfect. I don't think you could get anything better than that, to be fair. Well, I would say that uh, the uh, guys that work in the R&D department are, are almost like uh, Santa's elves. In, in, in yeah. that they can put some really magical stuff together. Um, yeah, incredible work. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, now I want to okay. try that. But so. Well, I want to try yours. I want to see it. Well, should we start? So yeah. the drink I'm going to be making today focuses on one of my favorite Monin syrups in the range, actually the winter spice, which is perfect for this time of year. Actually really good in autumn as well. But for winter, you've got those kind of really comforting, warming spice flavors, a little bit of sweetness as well. And we're going to be using this as the base for two Irish coffees, which are very similar, but have quite different characters. So one of which is going to be using quite a peaty, um, sweet whiskey, fire and cane from Glenfiddich which is going to get more of that kind of wood smoke. Um, there is some sweetness from the rum barrels as well, but really kind of peat forward, so a really big flavoured Irish coffee. It's going to be served with espresso in a small glass. And then on the other side of the coin, we've got a Caribbean cask uh, Balvenie, which is very vanilla forward, very sweet, um, much more delicate and subtle than the kind of peaty whiskey. This is going to be a little bit more um... traditional. Dan, I'd say your Irish coffees are looking quite Scottish. They really are, yeah. I know, I'm terrible for this. Uh, I did a competition not too long ago where I had to make an Irish coffee, but I've just about kept face by having a coffee roaster who was Irish. So, uh. <laughs> yeah, traditionally, obviously Irish whiskey. I like to use um, whatever whiskey is appropriate for the flavour profile we're trying to build. But yeah, I would totally agree. Traditionally, of course, Irish whiskey. So, same template, 25 mil of spirit, 15 mil of syrup coffee almost to the top and then cream as well so we're going to be infusing our cream with a little bit of vanilla which has been done in advance which is really simple to do um all you do take a vanilla pod split it pop it into a bottle of cream leave it just for maybe 12 hours in the fridge and then in the morning you get really delicious kind of speckled vanilla cream so that's in here prepared and ready to go really easy to do and i'm going to start by making my coffee so for the slightly longer Irish coffee, more traditional ratio, we're going to be using what's called a clever dripper, and this is a brewing device. We're going to be adding coffee to this, which is pre-ground, but I would recommend grinding it as freshly as you can. We're going to go 25 grams of coffee, and then we're going to add to that 300 grams or 300 mils of water at 96 degrees. So I'm going to start brewing that now. I'm going to pop this straight into the clever dripper. And I really like this brewing method for filter coffee for Irish coffees, because not only can we brew very strong by adding more coffee than we usually would to water, but by adding the two in the same vessel, we get that real nice immersion. So the coffee and the water interact together rather than the water just being poured over a bed of coffee and percolating through. And this tends to give us a little bit more intensity and a little bit more body. So I'm going to grab my water at 96 degrees. Grab myself a spoon. I love the name, Clever Dripper. It's good, isn't it? So uh, it is very clever, but also a very good brewer. Mm. So really simple, has all the benefits of the body you get with a cafetiere, but then all the cleanliness of a more of a pour over method because you get that paper filtration. So I've got 300 grams in there. Do you think it's a method we're seeing in more and more independent coffee shops? Absolutely. Yeah, it's really simple because now you can actually leave it to do its thing. So I've got a preheated vessel here, which I'm going to brew the coffee into. We're going to let it steep for one minute. After that, we're going to give it a little stir, drop it into here. And in that time, we'll start making the rest of the Irish coffee. So we're up at 43 seconds and we're going to be starting, like I say, with a slightly lighter Irish coffee, a little bit longer. And what I usually do as well, just before I serve the drink, just preheat my glass with a little bit of water. And then the nice thing about this is it makes sure the hot aspect of the drink is nice and hot, but then also the cream is nice and cold. So it's that contrast between the two. So this has now been brewing for a minute. Let me give that a little stir just to make sure it's fully mixed. And we'll drop that. And now my glass is nice and warm, just a little bit of water, not too much. I'm going to get rid of that. And we're going to add our whiskey. And like you were saying, Lee, these recipes are very much adaptable. This can be applied to different whiskeys, different syrups, different coffees. 
I'm actually using a Christmas blend for one of my friend's roasteries today. That kind of figgy spice cranberry, really nice flavor profile. And this ties in really well with the winter spice syrup. So 25 ml of a, probably a lighter whiskey of your choice, preferably vanilla forward. And again, if you want it more boozy, add more booze. Your hey, well, recipe has um, given me a bit of inspiration. Go on. It'd be great to combine two two classic hot drinks, which is the, uh, the Irish coffee that you're doing, and a hot buttered rum. I can see the combination of those two working really well. Mm. Yeah. I might be one for us to explore another time. 2021. It's going to be a much better year. Hot buttered year. Irish coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That sounds delicious. Hot, well, hot buttered rum is another one of my favorite winter cocktails. Mm, it's got that really nice kind of silky texture, much like the cream you get with the Irish coffees. So that's now drawn through. Give that just a little mix. You want to pour quite vigorously to make sure it mixes nicely. And then to that, I'm going to add my cream. But in the meantime, I'm very, very quickly going to build my second Irish coffee, which is the shorter, more intense Irish coffee. I should say Scotch coffee, really. And this is 25 ml of our peaty whiskey. This is definitely one to sit by the fireplace, right? Oh yeah, so good. It's, um, yeah, all those kind of nice roasty, toasty notes. A little bit mm. of smoke, but because we've got the winter spice syrup, it really balances that out. Takes the edge yeah, off that as well. Again, 15 mils. This is a more intense kind of cup profile. Same coffee, but brewed as espresso. So this is a freshly brewed espresso. Double shot. We're just going to add enough water just to get to the top of the cup. And you can actually smell the difference between the two of them. So now we've got two delicious bases. And now I get to look silly by wearing a Christmas hat while shaking cream. So here we go. <laughs> going to give this round about 50 shakes, which is about right for about 300 mils of double cream, but make sure you don't buy extra thick, otherwise it'll turn into butter pretty quickly. So I'm gonna count, shake, and look stupid. We wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear it start to thicken up. If it stops shaking, you've made butter, you've gone too far. I'm gonna get a little bit more. And then what I like to do is give this a fine strain. And I can actually see the little flecks of vanilla in there. Really, really lovely. Cream doesn't have any aroma really, but vanilla cream. Mm. There's so much more to it. Really nice kind of introduction to the drink. Pop that through the sieve. So you've almost got um, a little bit of that eggnog flavor profile going on there as well. Yeah, kind of Irish cream, all those kind of nice wintry flavors. Mm. Works really, really nicely to be fair huge fan of this and then depending on how brave you are you can try and float it straight on top of the drink or you can use a spoon to give you a little hand so i'm going to start with a spoon see how it goes then i might be brave for the second one yeah it's such a visually appealing one as well the irish whiskey yeah the thing is if someone orders one of these in a bar, everyone wants one. And they're not the easiest yeah. to make and they're quite messy with all the cream, but justifiably on a lot of menus because they're such delicious drinks. And the better the ingredients you use, the better the drink's going to be. And despite so now, the fact there's a lot involved, I always enjoyed making Irish coffees when I worked in bars, just because, yeah. of, as I said, you know, it, it looks really great and take a lot of satisfaction out of uh, making a good Irish coffee. Absolutely. And the look on people's faces, the first sip is generally a face full of cream, even sometimes a mm. chin full of cream, which I'm a bit nervous about. But the second mm. sip, when you get all that coffee coming through, that kind of rich, the warm whiskey, which gives it that kind of comforting kind of aroma and taste. Really, really nice. Optional. A little bit of cinnamon, if you like. Mm. I'm going to pop that just over the drink. Like a dusting of snow. And there we have two winter spice Irish coffees, one of which is short intense with a little bit of smoke. One of them is longer, much more vanilla forward, kind of a more mild, comforting 
Irish coffee. So now am I going to look stupid? Yeah, I, I think you should drink them both and, you know, have a very merry afternoon. <laughs> it's about, about midday. I think that's probably not a good idea, but I'm going to have a sip. <laughs> and I think you should join me for a drink, Lee. Okay, come on then. We can both have uh, cream mustaches. Yeah. So, Cheers, I guess, Dan. Merry, merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody. <laughs> there it is. That was such a good drink. I definitely need some tissue. <laughs> so I think we've had enough time making ourselves look foolish. But uh, yeah. yeah, thanks, Lee, for your time today. It's been awesome. Pleasure as ever, mate. Thanks, yeah, thanks yeah. to you too. Have a lovely Christmas. And to everyone watching, make sure you have a very safe and lovely Christmas. And let's hope 2021 is a much improved year for everybody. So yeah, only get thanks, better, Lee. right? Exactly. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Thanks very much. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>